Previously on the bill. Inspector Gold is going to be leaving with immediate effect, and I'd like to offer you the job. When you absorb other people's grief and emotion, you have to find a way to discharge it. I don't go. I'm okay. PC girl, Sunhill. She was there one minute. She. <laughs> Mrs. Riley. Uh, perhaps it would be better if we did this inside. I'll turn my back for a second. How like, old is Bethany? Um, she's eight. Because I was talking to one of the parents, and, um, and, and then she was gone. Exactly where were you? Um, I was on the pavement in front of the school gates. Okay, what well, time was that? Three thirty. Um, yeah, half an hour ago. You see, someone must have taken her, but I don't understand, because she was right by my side. Right. Have you spoken with any of the other parents? Did they see Bethany move away or talk to a stranger? No, no one. It gets pretty congested, you know, because that's the parents' drive. OK, um, has she ever run away before? No. I, I hoped, I thought maybe she'd come back here. Have you searched the house? Yes, of course. <laughs> Mrs Riley. Have you and Bethany have any disagreements recently? I mean, we don't have disagreements. You're not listening. She, she doesn't do things like this. <sighs> um, could we have a photo, Mrs. Um, yeah. <sighs> right, is this what she was wearing when you last saw her? Yeah, um, white shirt, green cardi, blazer, new sandals. Black. Um, she has named tags. Everything's named. Um, she's four foot. She's petite. She's got this smile. Oh, I blame this school. They should let them take their mobiles. I'll get description circulated. She's bad. <laughs> is, uh, is this her grandfather? No, that's her dad. Her dad. I'm sorry, I am. Oh, it's not you. You will, you will find her. We have people out searching for her very soon. Does her father know that Bethany's missing? Um, we, he drives a cab and I've tried ringing him, but he's not answering. No? Yeah. Eight-year-old girl, Bethany Riley, reported missing outside Cheatham Junior School. Her mother met her, turned to talk to another parent, child was gone. What time was this? 3.30, quarter to four. I've got a photo, description. You should make a habit of wandering off. First time. Mother says it's completely out of character. OK, take Mickey, get down there, have all available uniform, search the school and environs, her normal route home. Speak to teachers, pupils, parents, caretaker. Who's the duty officer? Rachel. OK, have a draw up plans for a house to house. Anyone checking the sexual offenders list? Stuart. OK, access to a computer? Only with parental control, apparently. 99% of children reported missing turn up. Look at it the other way, 1% don't. No missing children is a motive. But the Gulf seems to be moving to top gear rather prematurely. Well, in abduction 18 months ago. What was the outcome? Well, do you mean did we find her? Yeah. It took a year, but we found her. Your messages. I was helping a passenger unload her shopping. How could you lose her? I didn't lose her! Mr. Riley, I'm PC Valentine from Sunhill. We're organising a search for your daughter. Hello? Yes. Oh, uh, oh just please get off the line.
The dad, Bob Riley, wasn't picking up his phone just after Bethany went missing. He's a cab driver, claims he was helping a customer unpack a shopping. Have you got an address? Yeah. 27 Park Mead Crescent to Mrs. Plater. She's a regular, apparently. Terry's on his way and I'll get him to go around there. Um, how was Riley when he came home? Well, he seemed upset, but, you know, contained. He's in his late 50s. It can't be easy sharing your life suddenly with a kid. Ageist. I'm a person of maturity. I'm allowed to be ageist. <laughs> That's her. That's Bethany. She's probably getting fed up with her mum. What's that? Stop talking. I've been through this several times. But that is the last sighting of Bethany. And her mother continued talking for about another four minutes. Can we see the moment she notices Bethany is missing? What sort of girl is Bethany? Confident, popular, and she's an only child. Parents don't on her. Not a child who'd run away. I wouldn't have thought so. No. Her mum was jabbering on a bit, wasn't she? So behind behind a wall, have a sock. I mean, even if Bethany had set off home, it's what? It's a ten-minute walk. We're going to need the DVD. Yep. Go ahead. If we could have a list of pupils, parents who are waiting, and staff, including non-teaching. Um, I've already done it. Do you want me to ring round? No, we'll talk to them. Thanks. Thank you. How do you open this? It's Bethany's diary. It's voice activated. No, voice, give it to me. It might. Well, say on Wednesday, I'm going to get abducted. Joanne. It's private. She'll be really upset if it's her. 257 from Sierra Oscar. Excuse me. <laughs> CCTV shows several vehicles, including a white van, parked outside the school. All partial plates. We're running checks. Bob Riley's cab? Not the footage. What about Riley's alibi? Terry spoke to her. Mrs. Plater thinks she picked her up outside the White Gate Centre and helped her unpack her shopping. Thinks? It was only a couple of hours ago. Mrs. Plater's in the early stages of dementia. If there are any receipts, she can't remember where they are. Riley does normally ferry her to the shops on a Wednesday. We're talking to assistants, seeing if we can get anything on CCTV. Oh, handy. A witness who can't remember whether you were there or not. Uh, Riley pulls up outside the school so his wife can't see. Could have prearranged it with Bethany. Don't tell Mummy. Off they go. He abducts his own daughter. Stranger things have happened. No news, I'm afraid. I'm going out. Drive around. Oh, I'll get a jumper. No, you should stay here in case, in case she comes back. Mum's coming over. Bethany will want... You, not a man. Big cuddle, all that girly stuff. Where's my keys? I've lost my keys. Oh, these then? There you go. Why don't I come with you? No. I'll take the police car, drive around, join the search. Oh, all right. Oh, are you OK? Yes. You tell her we love her. We're not angry. Don't, don't, don't let him fool you. He's a different man inside, you know, he keeps it all bottled up. <laughs> Bethany's a daddy's girl, really. Heaven help us when she gets a boyfriend. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll keep my eye on him. How many more of these we got? On our list, 13 who were known to have been in the playground, 9 who were on the video. I think it rang, did it?
This is Campbell on DC Web, this is DC Dastry from Sun Hill. I wonder if we could have a word with your son, Mason. Mace? Why, what's he done? Nothing. A girl went missing from outside his school, Bethany Riley. We're talking to all the pupils who left at the same time, see if they saw anything. God, that's terrible. What happened? We're not sure, that's why we'd like to talk to Mason. Of course. Sorry. Come in. Thanks. Is Mason? I'm not talking to myself here. Is Mason? Don't know. Can't say anything. Could someone go and find out, please? Mace, if you're in, get yourself down here. The law's after you. No, they ain't. Little girl's gone missing from Cheetham Junior. Mace! Turn the telly off, will ya? Yeah? What have you been doing up there, Mace? It'll make you blind. Whoops, you're blind already. <laughs> Shut it, you. Homework. I wonder if Liam and Megan can go upstairs with it, is okay? You heard the man. I turn the telly off. Mason's father in? He's working on the stadium. His times are all over the place. I'll leave you to it then. Oh, well, actually, Mason might find it easier if you were present. Right, OK. Shall I put the kettle on? Yeah. Why not? Mason, you know who Bethany Riley is? She sang in that concert? Yeah. Do you remember seeing her when you left school this afternoon? Her mum comes to pick her up. Did you speak to Bethany? I'm ten. She's only year four. Did you see her move away from her mum? Play with anyone? I'm not sure, sorry. It's OK, Mason. What did you do after school? Come home. I had some cornflakes. Were you here, Mrs Gamble? I'm on the afternoon shift. I don't finish till six. When you were leaving school, Mason, did you see anyone strange outside the school? Anyone you don't normally see? What did you see, Mason? Even if it sounds silly, it might help. Mum, what are you asking me for? If you saw something, tell him. I saw Dad. No, you didn't. You saw your father? Yeah. You're getting confused. It's Wednesday, not Tuesday. What happens on Tuesday? Ryan, his dad, coaches the under-10s football team. I saw him. Where did you see him? Mace. He's making it up. You said to tell him. Mrs. Kimball, please. Don't worry, Mason. We just need to be clear about who was there. Now, where exactly did you see your dad? In his van. Did he come to pick you up, Mason? He never picks me up. Did you speak to him? I waited a bit. He stayed in his van, so I came home. You didn't go and say hello? I thought we might be cross. Oh, God. You'd better have been telling the truth. Yeah? DC Webb. DC Dustry, Sun Hill. Bethany Riley's gone missing from Cheetham Junior. What? How did that happen? I understand that he was parked outside the school at approximately 3.35 this afternoon. There's a van on the CCTV footage. Briefly. I told you. I said, Mum. Shut it, Mace. You want to tell us what you're doing then? I wanted to speak to someone. Who? Someone about the football team. They weren't there. I'd drive off. But Susie and I should really be out there helping with the search. May we look inside your van, please, Mr. Kemble? What? No, why? Is there something in your van you don't want us to see? Just show them the van, Ryan, OK? I can explain. Explain what, Mr. Kemble? Sorry. Your son's a moron. Do you know that? Grace. Bethany Riley. Riley. It's simple. It's a simple explanation. Where's Bethany, Mr. Campbell? No, no, you've got this all wrong. Look, whatever's happened to the girl, it's got nothing to do with me. Ryan Campbell, I'm arresting you on suspicion of kidnapping. 
You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. For a prisoner, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Dad, leave him alone. Dad needs to come and answer some questions, all right? Go back to your mum, son. He didn't do anything. Get him inside, Susie. Listen to your parents, Liam. He didn't do nothing. Liam, go off me. Look, you're not making this any easier for your dad, okay? Liam, listen to me. I need you to take care of your mum, okay? I'll be home soon. Oh, I can't. No, Mason, stay. That's a good thing. Now, if Liam gives you a hard time, tell your mum. Hey, Mason. I'm rubbish. I've got two left feet. You're not on your dad's school team? You must be joking. My dad could have played for the Gunners. Centre forward for the Arsenal or a job in plaster. It's a tough goal, isn't it? Campbell claims he found the cardigan yesterday when he was tidying up the school hall after football practice. He wanted to give it back to Bethany's mum this afternoon. She was busy chatting to a friend, so he drove off. Yeah, look at this. This is Campbell's van arriving as Bethany walks by. Hang on a second. If he gets out the driver's door and goes round the back, then we ain't going to see him. Uh, we're talking to parents asking if they saw him opening the rear doors. Did he say why he lied earlier? He didn't exactly lie, Gav. He just failed to mention Bethany's mum or the cardigan. He said that when his wife told him that Bethany was missing, he panicked because he knew something would look bad. Well, that's pretty aware. Most people would admit to having the cardi, then realise the implications. Any previous? Uh, Susie Kemble reported him three times for domestic violence. Started when she was pregnant with the last child, Mason. Most recent incident was when Mason was four. Every time she refused to go to court. Social services? Uh, not involved. No indication that the children were at risk. I kicked her in the belly. Is there anything else? Yeah, Kemble coaches the under 10s football on uh, Tuesdays after school. Started when his son Liam was at the school. Is it strange that he continues to coach them even though his son Mason isn't in the team? Mm, maybe the bloke just likes football. Or maybe he likes hanging about with kids. Anything turn up on sex offenders? No, go. All present and accounted for, sir. Is he our man? Well, identical cardigan to the one Bethany was wearing was found inside his van, sir. Forensics are checking the vehicle now. I'm having his house searched. It might turn something up. Grace and Mickey are about to interview Kemble. Small child disappears from a pavement yards away from her mum. How? It makes it probable it was someone she knew. Nearest and dearest? Well, Roger said that the father, Bob Riley, didn't answer the phone when Bethany went missing. Um, he says he's a cabbie and he was with a customer at the time. A regular. An OAP medically diagnosed with memory loss. She doesn't know a Wednesdays from a Tuesdays. <laughs> Convenient for Riley if he plans to abduct his daughter on a Wednesday. Roger is out searching with him now, sir. He's been told to give him some slack in case Riley makes a move. How many officers have we got out there? A hundred, approximately. Day shift have elected to stay on. Barton Street have drafted in uniform, plus civilian volunteers. Parents from the school have been searching since five. I'll get onto the press office and have something lined up for the news. Right. Bethany's mum says she did lose a cardigan sometime in the last couple of days. But here's the thing. Bethany's got two identical school jumpers. So it's still possible the cardigan found in Kemble's van was the one that she was wearing when she disappeared. Where's Bethany, Ryan? I have no idea. The longer this goes on, the worse it gets. Not just for Bethany, but for you. She is eight years old. I found the cardigan. I was taking it back. Why suddenly drive off like that? Bethany's mum was talking to her mate. It looked a long one. You got the CCTV footage? Show me. I never touch a girl. You're in and out of that school every single week. You know exactly what the CCTV covers. You misjudged it, pal. We've got the front half of your van. Yeah, that's where the space was. I parked in the space. Why didn't you pick Mason up while you were there? He's your son. I had surprise to get. But not even to say hello. That's not very fatherly, is it? I mean, maybe you didn't spot him. Maybe you thought he'd gone. Coast was clear. No. Do you like Bethany? What? <sighs> She's OK. I mended a Healy for her once. So she was used to seeing you around the school? Yeah. She trusted you? I don't know. Of course she did. You mended a Healy for her. Where did you tell her you were taking her this afternoon? Look at me. I'm not a nonce. You really... I can't even look. It's disgusting. It's an illness, Ryan. Talk to us and we can help. I have kids of my own, you stupid. A wife. We have sex. Yeah. 
And you're the perfect husband and the perfect father. Thank you, son. Excuse me, hello? Have any of you seen this girl? Well, if you do, the number's on the bottom. Ring it, all right? Is there a wood? No. seen on the pavement outside her school at approximately 3.35 this afternoon. Her mother Joanne had stopped to talk to a friend. When she turned back again, her daughter had gone. That's my sweetheart. Mummy and Daddy love you very much. If anyone out there has my daughter, please don't hurt her because she's only eight years old. She'll be really, really scared. Just don't be frightened, princess. I'll be back with Mummy really soon, I promise. Whoever you are, please... Let my How can she just disappear from a pavement? Surrounded by her friends, a few feet away from her mum. Gimbal's van's parked outside, opens the doors, tells her it's a game. I don't know. Just another kid on her way from school. It's not comprehensive, it's junior school, all the parents and pupils, they know each other. Joanne Riley said her daughter always had two pounds in her satchel for emergencies. Bethany, fed up waiting for her mum, jumps on a bus to teach her a lesson. Yeah, but where is she now? Has anyone checked the CCTV from that room? Yes, yeah, Stuart, nothing. <clears throat> How long till sunrise? Four hours. Missing kid, eh? Every copper's nightmare. Every parent's nightmare. They spotted something. Uh, no, no, it's it's just. Uh, Why don't you go home? Get some rest. I'm not going home without Bethany. Thanks. What about you? My shift will keep going as long as it can. Bethany's a good little swimmer. We learnt together. Merchant Navy and I couldn't swim. You got kids? Afraid not. Never too late. It makes you see a different world. Over here! Yeah, give me access. Oh, go. All right, all right. What have you got? No. Nothing. It's garbage. Come on. She needs a dad! No, I'm sorry, but you can't. This is a crime scene now, Mr. Riley. I'm really, really sorry for you. She's my daughter! Hold on to her, Ben. Call it in. 
Call it in. See her, Oscar, from 354. A girl's body found. Denton to me. School cardigan. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily rule Ron Campbell out. Any tire marks from a van? Well, several vehicles, plus various footprints. I'll let you know if there's a match to Campbell as soon as possible. Was she sexually assaulted? Underclothing doesn't appear to be disturbed, but she was kicked in the head before the killer put her by the fence. Eight years old, and the last moments of your life are spent here. Was it quick? No. I don't think it was. See you back at the station. Yeah. Sorry. We're very sorry. Very sorry for your loss. Well? There's no way that this was accidental death. Bethany was killed unlawfully. Did he touch her, you know? T touch her? We haven't done a post mortem yet. As soon as we know, we'll. You'll all have read this morning's headlines. Evil stalks our streets. Innocent snatched inches from mum. Now, I know how dedicated you all are to finding Bethany's killer. However, I have to remind you, the publicity around this will be insidious and relentless. So no talking to the press. They're going to be waving bundles of cash around. If you fancy a trip to the Maldives, buy a lottery ticket. If you're tempted, that's understandable. Just talk to someone. It happens. Eddie. Bethany Riley was found at the east end of the Denton timber yard adjacent to the River Broon. She had trauma to the left side of her head, consistent with vicious kicking, although we're not ruling out a blunt instrument at this stage. She was moved and propped up against this wire fence here. She was then covered with a large tarpaulin. She was fully clothed. Preliminary examination suggests she had not been sexually assaulted. They're doing the post-mortem now. They reckon time of death was approximately between 4.30 and 6 p.m. Which means she was killed within hours of going missing. The murder scene is one mile from Cheatham Jr., two miles in the other direction from her home. Okay, Bethany's cardigan and our main suspect, this guy, Ryan Kemble. We've got him in custody, he's a plasterer and he voluntarily coaches the school football team. He was seen outside the school in his van by his son Mason around the time that Bethany disappeared yesterday afternoon. Now he didn't stay to pick his son up, he just drove off. The cardigan belonging to Bethany was in his van. He claimed that he found it the previous day and intended to give it back to Bethany's mum. Then he saw Bethany's mum talking to a mate, decided not to bother. Until Bethany was discovered, it was possible that the cardigan found in his van was the one she was wearing when she went missing. Obviously, both cardigans have now been accounted for. The van interior is clean. We're checking the tyres for a soil match from the crime scene. You know, all you've got on Kemble is weird behaviour. Him not picking his son up. He still could have done it. He's fled for domestic violence. No, different profiles. No previous, no indicators. I know we're suspicious of anyone who volunteers to coach children, and I know he was our main suspect, but the cardigan is all we really had. So, if we release Ryan Kemble, we're left with Bethany's father, Bob Riley. Roger. Uh, Riley wasn't answering his mobile when she went missing. Claims he dropped an elderly passenger off in his cab, helped her unload her shopping. It's a weekly booking. He left his phone in the vehicle. Yeah, I spoke to that passenger. Her name is Mrs. Plater. She suffers from memory loss, so she can't corroborate Riley's alibi. 
A neighbour said that she saw a taxi cab pull up outside the house yesterday afternoon, but she can't confirm the time nor the identity of the driver. For what it's worth, uh, I had Riley down as somewhat restrained for a man whose only daughter was missing. Now, I don't know. I reckon he's just private, keeps the suffering inside. He seemed genuinely upset when they found the body. That well, doesn't exactly rule him out. OK, I think that's it for now. Uniform are going to be carrying out a search from the murder scene back to the school. Now, be doubly vigilant along the riverbank. It's possible that the killer disposed of some bloodstained clothing along the way, OK? Grace and Kezia, check Bethany's bedroom and speak to school friends. Are we absolutely certain that she had no access to the internet? Terry, look into the family members, both sides. And Stuart, let's organise a review of the CCTV two-mile radius, OK? So. Door to door will continue from the point of disappearance extending up to and beyond the area of the crime scene. Visit the local shops. Did they see Bethany? Notice anything that might be suspicious. A little girl disappeared in broad daylight, yards away from her mother. Re-interview anyone who was inside or outside that school yesterday afternoon and compare notes. Let's make sure we're looking at the whole picture. Something like this. Ruins lies. You ever think about that? What do you think they're going to say at work today? Hey, here comes the knots. Put the cat on and we'll have a brew. You were never charged. Yeah, right. I had two that on my forehead. My kids or wife ever get threatened because of you suffer any intimidation. No, don't you come anywhere near me or my family. If anyone's going to suffer, it's his family. Men. We reacted too quickly. I should have waited. Got more on him. Don't beat yourself up. He could still be the killer. No, it's not looking very likely, is it? Campbell's still a suspect. Do you have any other suspects, ma'am? Any other suspects, Is he still a suspect? Make up for eight-year-olds. Stop she using your mum's. No, I don't think it's healthy to indulge a child excessively. At least she knew she was loved. There are hairs on this pillowcase. Short grey ones. Daddy says I'm his special princess. Special. His special princess, but not to tell. It's a secret. How exactly was Bethany loved? Did you manage to get any sleep when you got home, Mr. Riley? Well, not really. I, I tried. It. Which room did you use? What? I know it sounds like a strange question, but it would help if you could answer it. In, in our bedroom with Joanne, uh, who just lay there. Here we go, Bob. Oh, God, like, thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, why? You and Bethany were very close, weren't you? She wrote in a diary, she was your special princess. Were you proud of her? She was my world. So why did you tell her not to mention it to anyone? What? She wrote in her diary, Daddy says I'm his special princess, but not to tell, it's our secret. I'm old enough to be a granddad. Anything different and kids pick on you up. See, I didn't want to say things like that. They'd have laughed at her. Are you sure that's why? I don't understand. We found short grey hairs on her pillowcase. So if you didn't use Bethany's bed this morning... Shut your mouth! All right, Bob, come Shut on. your filthy mouth! You, you think I'd do that? I don't know. I don't know you. I do know that you love your daughter very much. And you want to take that love? You want to take the only thing I've got left and soil I'm it? sorry, Mr. Riley. It's my job to ask these questions on Bethany's behalf, however uncomfortable they are. Now, why are there grey hairs on Bethany's pillow? Ever since she was a baby, Bethany slept with us in our bed. If I come home late, rather than disturb them, I sleep in her bed. Bethany was eight. Fine, right, so what? You're, you're, you're judging our parenting skills, is that it? 
Bethany slept in our bed because she wanted to. Because we were a family. Ah! We are a family. We love our daughter. And don't think for one minute I'm going to apologise for that. Take Bob out of the scenario for the moment. Bethany is so protective she must have thought the whole world loved her, which would have had the reverse effect, making her more trusting, therefore more vulnerable. Someone groomed her. Well, how? She didn't have access to the internet. Her mum and dad were with her most of the time. It had to be someone close. Yeah, like a dad. I hate these cases. Okay. We go back to where she was last seen, work the radius of the murder scene, do what the guff said, fine tooth comb, CCTV, door to door. Someone out there holds the key to this. They just don't know it yet. Mason, everything okay when your dad got back? Yeah, of course. He got bring flowers, I ain't got no money. That's all right. I'm sure Bethany understands you're thinking about her. You know something, you probably should be out on your own today. Does your mum and dad know? I'm old enough to look after myself. In that case, do me a favour. Get yourself home, fella, yeah? Riley's hair's on Bethany's pillow. He claims she used to sleep in the same bed as him and his wife, and if he came home late, he'd sleep in Bethany's bed. But I've asked the pathologist to check for a history of sexual activity. Bethany's happy, confident, outgoing. It's not the profile of an abused child, is it? Besides, when were he and her ever alone together? Well, Roger said Riley used to take her swimming. With Mum watching. On the other hand, Ryan Campbell parks his van here. Gets out, carefully avoids being seen by CCTV. Mum's chatting. Mickey, been there, done that. He wanted to return the cardigan. Yeah, he picked it up the day before yesterday. Kept it as a trophy. Used it to get excited about Bethany. He only thinks of it as an alibi after we've picked him up. This is James. Can we have a word, please? Well, of course. The school's closed for the rest of the week. Children, they're very upset. I'm trying to organise counselling for them. Well, this won't take long. I was just wondering if you'd noticed anything different about Mr. Campbell's behaviour recently. No, but I thought you'd released him. We have. Is he good with the children that he coaches? Surprisingly, considering his usual people skills, he doesn't talk down to them. Well, unless it's one of his. He's tough on his own children. Well, not Liam and Megan, but Mason, yes. What's Liam like? He's an average student. Got into the odd fight. Bullies his brother Mason quite badly, but then, well, he gets that from his dad. In what way? Mason's pretty neglected. I mean, I have tried mentioning it to Mr. Kemble. You know, we spent years thinking that Mason had learning difficulties, but it turns out he just needed glasses. How does Liam bully Mason? Well, it was worse when they were both pupils here. Called him Spaz for a start. The other kids started repeating it. I mean, Mason doesn't have good spatial awareness, but he's a nice boy. He's keen to please. When Liam talks Mason, you think he's copying what he's heard his father say? I'm afraid so. And the sad thing is, Mason adores his dad. When the other boys are talking about what they did at the weekend, he starts telling stories about how he and his father went to Brands Hatch together. That just makes things worse for him. And when you mentioned this to Mr. Campbell? He's, uh, resentful that I'm even troubling him with Mason. He doesn't appear well-equipped to cope with anything different. You know the type. Domestic violence obviously has issues with control. Can't cope with anything that's different. Now, I think Mason punishes anyone that's different. The Riley's little princess, assured, precocious even, expecting him to mend the Healy. I just don't buy it. 
Okay, so Ryan Campbell's not a nice guy, but a child killer. Cheers. Yeah? Liam Campbell's school just called the station. He hasn't been in today. They're concerned he might have been attacked by fellow pupils. Feelings about his dad are running high. His parents? Not answering the phones. School, Liam. Bunking off cost your old man 50 quid a pot, you know that. My dad's not an answer, okay? They're giving you a hard time at school. I want my ball. What happened to the rabbit? The spaz killed it. Say that again? The spaz, Mason. How? He had it out, it tried to run away, he grabbed it, hugged it and crushed the thing to death. Mason killed the rabbit? Yeah. Didn't you, Mason? Hi. Hello. I'm DC Perkins. This is DC Walker. We're investigating the murder of Bethany Riley. Her body was found down the road at the Dalton Timber Yard. OK. Isn't that a chicken school tie? Yeah, it is. We mention it. Of course we do. Then it becomes something. Governor's desperate for a result. It is something. We're all desperate for a result. Grace. Bethany Riley's post mortem. It appears she survived the initial attack. What, a kick into the head? Yeah. She was alive when the killer propped her up against that wire fence. So what killed her? Well, Bethany also suffered two broken ribs, one puncture in the lung. There was a pattern of bruising around her chest and back area. Consistent with the further kicking? No, 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 no. It appeared she'd been restrained, but kind of gripped around the chest somehow. Yeah. Squeezed to death. I heard. Grace. Terry and I might have got something. That's Mason Campbell. The shop's north, River Mill Road, in the vicinity of the timber yard. He lied to us about his whereabouts after he left school. Well, he didn't say he went straight home. He ain't got nothing to go home for. He just wanders about all over the place. The news agent remembers him because his left shoe was wet. It squished when he walked. Just his left shoe? Yep. Right, what have we got? Mason Campbell. Brian Campbell's son. We both saw that he kicks with his left foot. Maybe he washed his left shoe in the river after kicking Bethany in the head. He's what? Nine? Ten? Are you serious? Come on, so he's a clumsy lump who can't play football. I killed a hamster when I was 11, you know what I mean? Chucked it in the freezer. It's not like he chopped the rabbit's paws off and cut his heart out, is it? He's a lonely, neglected child who's had little emotional input. Maybe he fantasised that Bethany was his friend. Maybe he fantasised about harming this perfect little girl as a, as a violent retaliation for his own treatment. Well, this is a child that we're talking about. Every school's got a couple of masons in it. Right, maybe yours didn't. You seriously think I'm suggesting this kid's a murderer because of some class prejudice? What's going on? Mason Campbell for killer. Grace, I was Mason once. I didn't go around kicking little girls' heads in. OK, you've arrested Ryan and accused Bethany's dad. The smell of this will stick to that boy for the rest of his life. We wouldn't even be having this conversation if he was an adult. He is ten years old. He is criminally responsible. Hey, hey, hey. calm down. Someone film in. Yes, boss. CCTV footage, Mason Kemble near to the murder scene with a wet left foot. Where's Mason's blazer? In the CCTV from the school, he's got his blazer on. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, I'll check the footage. My guess, that's in the river too. What was it his headmistress said about him? He's a nice lad, he's keen to please. Do you know what, he wasn't even in the same year as her. What's he done, sinner yesterday and just decided to take her off? Maybe. Maybe he planned it, I don't know, but just because we haven't found a connection yet. That footage, Bethany singing, what was it? School concert. Has anyone actually run it on? What 
What is that? A bracelet. Did Mason just pick up Bethany's bracelet? That's what we think, sir. You're suggesting ten-year-old Mason is responsible for eight-year-old Bethany's death? Yes, sir. You sure of your grounds? I'm sure if he was an adult, we wouldn't hesitate to bring him in for questioning. Grace, if you're all right. I know. One child killing another. It's unthinkable. Because he's a kid, I was supposed to feel sorry for him. Do you know what happened to Bethany? She's a gone off. Is that funny? I failed! This is not a competition. I wanted to hit him. I'm not a bad person, okay? And stand up for your son, please.